trim your sails properly and have found your way. In the stormy waters outside, you come to this place of peace and we welcome you to Trinity today. Um, whichever community you have come out of, we thank you for your presence today. We pray that God will bless you as you come into this place. Uh, some of you were able to be here last Sunday. And you may remember what I made you do last Sunday. I made you do it again. Because we have some new faces in our midst. And we are one family of God, and we want to affirm that every time we come together in the name of our Lord. So I'm going to invite you, as much as you're comfortable with it, I didn't know I'm pushing some envelopes for Lutheran people, but uh, I'm going to ask you to get up, find somebody that you can welcome to worship today with a handshake, no kissing, you don't have to hug, but just find somebody that you can welcome to worship today. Let's take a moment to do that again.
rejoice in this gift of God, the grace that guides us as we say together, Lord, I lift your name on high.
first lesson is from Genesis 18, verses 20 to 32. Then the Lord said, How great is the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah, and how very grave their sin. I must go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me. And if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are 50 righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not forgive it for the 50 righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to, stay, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just. And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. Again he spoke to him, suppose 40 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 40, I will not do it. Then he said, oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak. Suppose 30 are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find 30 there. He said, let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose 10 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is from Colossians 2. Verses 6 to 19. Fullness of life in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits, of the universe and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily and you have come to fullness in him who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ when you were buried with him in baptism. You were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink, or of observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement, and worship of angels, dwelling on visions, puffed up without cause by human way of thinking, and not holding fast to the head, from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with a growth that is from God. The word of the Lord. Continue to get part of 
hearts and voice and attention to God's word as we turn to Psalm 138. You'll find it printed on our PowerPoint. I invite you to give your voice as well as your hearts to it. It is, a, it is a, as many of the Psalms are, it is a prayer. There's much about prayer in our readings today, and certainly as we gather, there's much about prayer. This offers words of thanksgiving to God, praise to God, but also trust and assurance of the one who is our God and our Father. So let's turn to God in Psalm 138. We join together. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before I bow, I sing your praise. I bow down before your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing in the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, He regards the lowly, but the body He perceives is far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, You preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out Your hand, and Your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill His purpose for me. Your steadfast love endures forever. Do not forsake the work of Your hand. Here ends our song. Amen. This time, anybody who would like to come and join me out here at the front, I would invite you to come down, but I want to give just one very brief caveat. Uh, today I'm going to be using peanut butter. So if there's anybody who has a peanut allergy or is sensitive to that, uh, I would encourage you to find the proper space uh, if that is something that is a danger to you. But if you are able to, please come. <laughs> Jesus' friends and followers come to him and say, Lord, teach 
us how to pray. That's a big one. That's important. That takes even longer, I think, to learn than how to make a peanut butter and jam sandwich. A peanut butter and jam sandwich is a basic. At least it used to be. When I was growing up, whoa, 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 long, 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 long ago. Everybody had PB and J sandwiches at the bottom of the lunch. I don't even know quite as much anymore, but it's still kind of one of the basic things of life. Prayer is one of the basic things of our life with God. So, I'm just be, maybe ask your mom, or your dad, your grandma, or your grandma, or an aunt, or an uncle, or somebody, you know how to pray. If you're already learning how to pray, wonderful. If you practice it, maybe you can help show somebody else how to pray too. We talk to God, we practice it a little bit right now. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes, put our hands together, and either folding them together or like this. Let's talk to God. He's here with us right now. Dear God, Thank you. Thank you for the many gifts you give to us. Thank you about everything that you are with us. Remind us of that. Help us to reach out to you. To know that we can talk to you. That we can just let our mind be at peace and know your presence with us. There's a lot of ways that we can know your presence in all of our prayers. Help us with that. To learn from one another and to teach one another. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thanks, you guys. Hope you're a little hungry for PB&J, but you're a little hungry for prayer, too. Yeah. You are. I'm right? sorry. I'll send you to pray. We'll get it. Thank you for joining me on the front. I would invite all of us to rise. Please, let us join together in our gospel acclamation. Turn your eyes upon Jesus.
I invite the congregation to be seated. Friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again, welcome to this space, this place, this people called Trinity, uh, to all of our brothers and sisters from Human Glory and from Resurrection Lutheran and and Christ Anglican, I see some of them mingling about too, so God bless you today as well. Wonderful to, to be together in this way and to, to proclaim the Lord's name together and to be followers of our Savior together as well. We pray God's blessing for all in this place. And I want to tell you about a story. I heard uh, that there was a Bible study that was being held for couples. Uh, and so they were gathering and they were learning much about couplehood and about how to be faithful people in a, in a coupling relationship. Uh, and they got to one of those sections that was talking about prayer. And, and one of the gentlemen kind of put up his hand and he says, You know what? I have discovered in my life that strangely enough, it seems like I do my best praying when I'm driving. And everybody kind of sat with that for a second and the uh, facilitator was going to give a moment for that to sink in. When the man's wife also spoke up and said, You know what? It's, it's quite remarkable. I have to also say that I tend to do my best praying when he's driving. <laughs> You can relate, I suspect. Indeed. Thanks be to God for the gift of prayer. It seems, as I said earlier, that there is much in our readings that invite and encourage and show us that we are to be a people who pray. But this is certainly one of the great vocations and most important vocations for, for those who are followers of Jesus Christ, that they are to be people who place themselves before God in some way, shape, or form through prayer. Uh, and so I pray blessing on you today. I hope that you are growing in your own prayer life and finding ways to draw near to God in prayer to know that God is present. And let me tell you, if you need some help with that, there are more books written about prayer than, than probably should be to some degree. You go into one of those Christian bookstores and you go to the section that's, that's there on prayer or go online and you Google uh, how to pray or books on prayer. Thousands, literally thousands of hits will show up. How to pray, where to pray, when to pray. What to ask for when you pray. What to ask for when you don't get what you ask for when you pray. And on and on and on. Right? The people of, of faith for thousands of years have understood that this is, this is an important part of our relationship to God, our Father. That we are to be in communion with God through this gift and this way of prayer. Monks and nuns, there are people who dedicated literally almost the entirety of their life to seeking prayer and being before God in prayer. I would agree, it's a, it's a very vital aspect of discipleship. It is so very critical to our relationship to God, to be in communion and communication with God. It's a little bit like trying to be married and never talking to your spouse. I don't recommend it. Some people maybe try that strategy. Well, maybe nominally you can be in a marriage relationship, but there is no intimacy. There's no potential for growth and being close to one another without giving yourself to one another some way, shape, or form of communication. And I think the disciples in our gospel reading have recognized that. They have seen that. I, and, and, and I expect, and I should have done perhaps a little more uh, research on this, and some of you who are more learned can, can instruct me later, and that will be the first time that I get taught something new, uh, that often followers would look to, to, the, to their teacher, their rabbi, their master, whoever it was that they were giving themselves over to, to teach them a prayer. We're going to sing one of those later. I'll give you a little uh, foresight uh, later in our worship service. The prayer of St. Francis of Sisi, very famous prayer, encapsulates some of his teaching, some of his, his perspective and his ways of approaching God. He put it into a prayer. It has also been put to music. It's wonderful. And the, the disciples have recognized that John the Baptizer has done that with his followers, his disciples. And so they come to Jesus and they say, Lord, teach us how to pray. Give us words. Show us how to draw here to God. Because we see that you are a person of prayer. You are one who regularly comes before the Father. Your strength, your direction, your courage, your ability, all of these giftedness that you have, there's some connection to prayer. We see that and so we hope and desire also to experience and to know that and then to be able to be in service and, and to be in the world as God would have us. So they come to him and, and we got this prayer. You know, probably by heart, some of the kids are still learning it, uh, but they're getting there because we say it quite regularly. It has been a blessing and a gift to the community of faith for, again, 2,000 years, the Lord's Prayer. Uh, it's 
such a gift and it, it, it touches people so so deeply. And I, I kind of didn't get him on some of these debates, but every now and then people would get me where, where it got changed the language slightly. Remember those days where everybody sort of had the old, and we still kind of do that here at Trinity, the older language, but then some modern, it was kind of an old language got shifted in there. Man, you could tell that people got worked up about that because that prayer was so important to them that they felt like you're changing it and it's not the right prayer anymore. It's so important to them. And Jesus says, when you pray, speak to the Father. Call out to the parent who made you, who knows you, who loves you. And I think the church took that now. In Greek, I'm not a very strong Greek scholar, the pater, which in Latin became pater and so on to father. It's, it's fairly formal, but I think the church caught the sense of what Jesus was saying, and it developed to the point where Paul would say, we can cry out to the one who is our Abba. This Aramaic word that means my dad, my daddy, my dada, the one who, who has been with me from the very first breath I ever took, and maybe even long before that, who was walking with me throughout my life, who intimately knows me, loves me, and wants to be in relationship with me. How are you doing when you talk to God? And that closeness? Is God Abba? That's sometimes hard to do. And I'll, I'll admit, sometimes as a pastor, we get a little, I get a little caught up in, in the language that I need to use when I pray. And oh my goodness, the, the words that I can sometimes pull out. You know, pastors are way too educated possibly because we read books and these words stick in our head as so we use language this way. 17 syllables long. And that could be okay. Sometimes it says precisely what we hope to say before God, but really, we need simple things to say come before God. Again, that's where I hope our children, not only as we teach them, will teach us what it is to come simply before our Abba. And to seek, in effect, almost to kind of crawl up on his lap, to sit there, to give ourselves over to God with all the things that cause us joy and excitement in life and all the things that are, are wonderful and wondrous that God has created and that God is opening our eyes and our hearts to and all of those shadowy, difficult, challenging things in our life that we also don't know that we can talk to anybody else about. Our heavenly parent knows and also wants to hear. He can help to change us and, and, and lead us through. And so we begin by declaring, God, you are our Abba. We love you, God. We want to be in that relationship with you. We want to give ourselves over to you because hallowed is your name. Remember that lovely old old language, hallowed. I can tell you, you want to talk to kids about what does that mean? Well, there's an old story about a child who had been praying that on and on and on again until somebody really listened closely and it was our Father who art in heaven. Harold is your name. <laughs> right? Well, no, this anybody would name Harold. I'm sorry, my God. But uh, there's that closeness again. But God is holy as well. And so while we seek that intimate and close and, and very vibrant, gentle kind of relationship, we also seek to be in a position of awe for our God, the one who hung the stars, the one who continues to move creation, the universe itself, through its paces until he determines that it is time to bring it all to its conclusion. God is God. And my head swims sometimes when I find myself coming before God and beginning to try to even start to contemplate who is this God that I give myself to. Who is this God? As the psalmist says, who are human beings before God that you should even be mindful of them, God? And yet you are. You who know the entire universe, every moving quirk and, and quasar and everything, and yet you know me. You. You care. You desire to be a part. So that God's kingdom can become a part of our life. I mean, I'm sure I don't have to tell all of you, you're all good uh, post-confirmation people. You remember real well, it was driven into your brain probably, right? Luther, small catechism. And what he says about uh, the Lord's Prayer and, and what this might mean when we say, Thy kingdom come, your kingdom come. Luther says, God's kingdom is going to come. God's kingdom is coming. It is. It has arrived and it is always arriving, but we pray that it will arrive in and with us as well. That we will humble ourselves before it, that God would reign in our life. That God would rule in my thoughts, in my attitudes, in what I do, and who I am. And so we pray, your kingdom come. Be the one who guides my life. Show me how to walk in this world. Give me eyes to see the kingdom as it is arriving. What a wonderful thing to know that God's kingdom is around us. That our Allah is constantly creative and making this for us. And then we say, give us our daily bread. I'm not talking peanut butter and jam. 
And, and when I read uh, in some of my preparations for this, the uh, Interpretation Series Commentary, my friend Craddock is a wonderful author. We had an opportunity to talk about authors. Go out and find stuff written by Fred Craddock. He's, he's a wonderful teacher, a wonderful preacher, a teacher of preachers. Uh, and in his commentary for this, on this line, he says the Greek, and I have to lean on others sometimes for the Greek, he says it's a little ambiguous, not entirely clear when it says, give us this day our daily bread. Because it could also maybe mean, give us today tomorrow's bread. Luther says it means kind of continue giving us our daily bread. All those things that we need for life, God knows. God knows our needs, and God provides for his creation in a bounteous and gracious and, and remarkable way that there is enough for all. There should be no shortages. If humanity, if people could be good stewards of what God has entrusted to us, there would be no want and lack around us. But this, this desire for tomorrow's bread, I think, also invites us to look off to that day when we will fully be in the presence of God. When God's kingdom will come to full completion. And maybe it's a little bit like this. I'll give you a little story. This will take a while, so stay with me. It, it has to do with Christmas, and I know Christmas seems to get in your face earlier and earlier and earlier again, so maybe you don't want to hear about it in the middle of summer. But I heard a story about a, a, a child who came to her dad, her, her daddy. She was just a little, little girl, and, and it was getting close to Christmas, and she kind of looked like up, up, and pulled her up, and put her on his lap, and, and he could look in her eyes, and he could tell that she was a little bit troubled, that there was something going on that was giving her a little bit of distress. And so he said, darling, what is it? I don't know if I can wait. And it's hard to wait. She'd been seeing all the Christmas preparations, you know, the tree had gone up, and she helped to put out the decorations and the lights out on the outside and inside, and, and all the cooking and baking and all the preparations, and knowing that there was cousins and family coming to visit, and she'd been to the mall, and she had this big long list of all these things, and she'd visited the mall, Santa Claus, and done all those things, right? And, and all of this stuff is just getting to be such a level of anticipation such a level of difficulty to hold in, she just says, I can't wait, Papa. That's her dad, and looks at her for a second, and pats his breast pocket right close to his heart. He knows his child. He knows sometimes she's impatient. He knows she has a hard time holding on with some of these things. He knew this moment would come, and so there in his pocket he has a small gift. A little something to help her along the way. He's been holding it back. He says, look in my pocket. There's something there for you, sweetie. Go ahead and open it up. It isn't Christmas yet. Not fully. Not completely. But it has already begun. The opening of that gift. And seeing a little piece of what Christmas will fully hold. The girl sees that. And her anticipation. With it, but also somewhat satisfied. And I think that's what God does for us. God knows we are an impatient, impatient people. God knows it is hard for us to wait. And He gives us tomorrow's bread today. At the table, the Father beckons and He says, Come, come and take your place. Come and crawl up on my lap. That's what you need. Take a look here in my pocket. Take a look here on my table. There is something for you. Take and eat. Take and drink. It is not heaven yet, and yet it is. It is tomorrow's bread today to strengthen us along the way, to shape us more into his people, into the image of our Savior, Jesus Christ, to help us as we wait and as we walk and as we work together. May God bless us in this. May God make it so. congregation to rise. We join in our hymn of the day. In Christ alone, please rise.
through our baptism into Christ. And therefore, living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith using the ancient words together of the Apostles' Creed. Let us join together. I believe in God, as Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was murdered. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again.
congregation again to be seated as we have heard this exhortation to prayer. We come before God now in prayer. I invite you to be still in your mind, your body, your spirit. Find that place that enables you to draw near to God, knowing God has already drawn near to you in Christ. Let us pray. God our Father, hallowed be your name. Indeed, we have heard that you have promised that everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who searches, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. And so we invoke your holy name today. And we ask that you would hear the prayers of your people. Give your Holy Spirit to your children. We pray for your church today. Indeed, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, and you have made us alive together with Christ. Empower all those who minister in your name. May we live lives that are rooted in Christ, built up in Him, established in faith, and always abounding in thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, remind us that in Jesus Christ you have disarmed the rulers and the authorities. You have made a public example of them, triumphing over them in the resurrection. We forget that. It doesn't always look like that. May your justice, your purpose be known and pursued by all those who serve nations and communities. May everyone everywhere come to know a share of your creation's goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we also pray that your kingdom would come in our community. Inspire each one of us and our churches as well to acts and attitudes of charity and grace so that all around us and we too might receive our daily bread, forgiving one another as you have forgiven us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, what a, what a delight, what a mystery to know that when we call, you answer us. And though you are high, you care for the lowly. And so we come before you now in our hearts, in this place, bringing our cares, our concerns, our joys, and our blessings, and offering them to you now as we proclaim them both silently and aloud. shut in, those who are hospitalized, those who are dying, those who grieve. We pray your mercy and your grace and your strength would come upon them. For those who work the land, that we pray that we would receive favorable weather for the growth of crops that will feed many and that will provide livelihood. Help us to tend to the earth that you have entrusted to us. For all our partners in ministry, we are, uh, I pray, being blessed through this new endeavor, this this summertime pursuit of coming together, it, it has been received very well in many ways, and so we pray that you would teach us in it and through it, that uh, we are brothers and sisters in your name. We pray for all those partnerships that we have for King of Glory and Resurrection and Trinity Lutheran, for Christ Anglican, for St. David's Trinity United, for St. Anne, Roman Catholic, for all of those other partnerships that are growing or perhaps are being uh, presented. We pray for wisdom and understanding for ways to grow and to experience your kingdom around us. Father in heaven, in your goodness, you pour out upon your people, truly, all that we really need, satisfying those who persist in prayer. So help us with that. Make us bold in asking, thankful in receiving, tireless in seeking, and joyful in finding, so that we may always proclaim your coming kingdom and do your will on earth as it is done in heaven. These things we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Would the congregation please rise for the great thanksgiving? Family of God, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who rose beyond the bounds of death and, just as he had promised, poured out your spirit of life and power upon the chosen disciples. At this, the whole earth exalts in boundless joy. And so, through the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we remember that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite the congregation to be seated. I will give just very brief words of instruction about how we proceed with communion here at Trinity. We do a continual movement of communion. We begin with this side, inviting you to come forward. The first individual will have bread. The second individual will have a tray. This is where it gets tricky. If you prefer grape juice, it is pre poured in the individual cups. Please just take one. If you prefer wine, take an empty glass, and the third individual will pour the wine for you, and we are getting the baskets. We always forget the baskets. They will be out there, and you can place your empty cup that will be recycled later in the, in the basket, and then please return to your pew from this direction. Once everyone has communed on this side, we will reset, and then we will invite this side to come forward. Cup, the Lord.
Please rise. Now, in the body and blood of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen us and keep us unto eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, for you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now I invite you to enter into it at the past and the blessing of our God. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And once again, I would invite the congregation to be seated. Hope you can manage to stay cool enough. It's a little hot in here, but we get a few bodies in here. But uh, God bless you for being here today. We you have been blessed in worship and pray and hope. And are there any announcements which need to be lifted up? Uh, we have three communities to be represented. Can we begin to take glory? Is there anything to uh, hold up? Okay, the glory of uh, Reminder Women's Breakfast is this Wednesday at 10, Home Corner Restaurant, corner of B e and 90, and other announcements are in the bulletin and offering on the whole sounds of Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, you people, hopefully you do. Took note as you came in or take note as you go out. Thank you for that. Uh, resurrection. Yes, thank you. Yes. Um, so tomorrow morning, starting at 9 a.m. for the week, is our annual vacation Bible School with uh, St. Dan. So if you haven't registered or you know people who have children that would like to go to vacation Bible School, please come at 9 a.m. at Resurrection Luther Church. And also, we continue to gather information with regards to the inquiry of our basement for a daycare. So if you have questions about that process, please direct them to Pamela Giles, the chair of the daycare committee, and or myself. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I will lift up one for Trinity from within the bulletin. You probably have read that. Uh, one row wears many hats here at with Trinity. Uh, we have been preaching and proclaiming and, and seeking different ways of partnering with uh, other communities of faith around the city. She's found one. She is now going to also take up part-time work with Zion Lutheran Church on maternity leave as their secretary, uh, office administrator, so we can put a blessing upon you. That would mean a little bit of sharing of time, and so you find in there times when she is going to be present here at the office. Uh, but as always, you can phone, leave a message, you can do email, you can text, you can get, text me, my cell phone's on here. So there are a lot of different ways of communicating, so reach out, just as we reach out to our Heavenly Father in so very many ways, reach out to the office. If you have a need or a question, and uh, Juan will certainly always feel that, and, and I will try to do the best I can. So, we always like to celebrate with those who are celebrating this coming week. Uh, at Trinity, we try to lift up and rejoice with those who have anniversaries, wedding anniversaries in the coming week. Do we have any from amongst our, our friends who will have a wedding anniversary in this coming week? Well, nobody gets married in the summer, I guess. Yeah. Nobody at that time either from any of the other communities of faith. Well, that's all right. Uh, because I got married this coming week, uh, so Heather and I will celebrate our uh, 11th anniversary this coming week, as will Louie, well not 11th, but that Louie will be on a shot. Don't pretend to guess how many they've got, uh, but we pray a blessing on those who celebrate their life together, and God bless all those. Birthdays, do you get a better chance of that? Any birthdays in the coming week from amongst our community? Wednesday, my niece is still in Slater celebrating her birthday. Awesome. So, Tim, thank you. We have one to celebrate there. From within Trinity, today is Andrew Gettle's birthday, and that's the only one I have from within Trinity's community, so let's wish them happy birthday. Join together.
Garden in Peace, we want to give an invitation for you to stick around, have a cup of coffee, have some cookies, some goodies, tea. It's all prepared in the back. You are welcome to come back in here. We'll hopefully clean up a little bit of the heat. Find a table, find a chair. We hope that you're able to stay if you are not. May God bless you this coming week. Our worship is concluded. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.